It seems that uh, Ireland has had its uh, own uh, case of a uh, bake the cake bigot, except in this case as well. It seems that the trial was actually thrown out. The Asher's gay cake case, European court rules case, inadmissible. Uh, a gay rights activist has lost a seven-year discrimination dispute over a cake a cake order as the European Court of Human Rights ruled his case inadmissible. So, just so you know, it wasn't uh, because of any actual content of the case itself, it's because the guy didn't actually meet the requirements to submit his case, but we can get into that. Gareth Lee started taking legal action back in 2014 after a Christian-run Belfast bakery refused to make him a cake with the slogan, Support Gay Marriage. The family firm Asher said the slogan contravened their Christian beliefs. The European Court ruled Mr Lee's case inadmissible, saying he had failed to exhaust all options in the UK courts, which is something that I was required to do whenever I submitted my case as well. The Belfast man has long argued that by refusing to fulfil his order, the bakery had discriminated against him on grounds of his sexual orientation and political beliefs. Discriminated against on your political beliefs? Man, that must suck. Uh, he won his original case but had a subsequent appeal in the UK uh, and a subsequent appeal in the UK courts but in 2018 the UK Supreme Court disagreed with the lower courts and found in favour of the bakery. Uh, Mr Lee then took his case to the European Court of Human Rights where it was examined by seven judges, turns out his case got a lot further than mine, who decided by majority that it should be dismissed. The long-running dispute has raised questions about religious freedom and the discrimination law. Oh, but we can have a nice little chat about that soon. In their ruling on Thursday, the judges said the case was inadmissible because Mr Lee had not invoked his, right un his rights under the European Convention of Human Rights at any point in the domestic proceedings in the UK courts. The judges decided that in order for a complaint to be, ad to be admissible, the convention arguments must be raised explicitly or in substance before the domestic authorities. So because... He never actually made an argument in the case, you know, as part of uh, Article 10, well, no, sorry, not Article 10, but in the overall arching European Convention of Human Rights, he didn't make any arguments based on those grounds. So when he tried to take it to the European Human Rights Court, yeah, basically he, he didn't follow the instruction manual. Uh, by relying solely on domestic law, the applicant had deprived the domestic courts of the opportunity to address any convention issues raised, instead asking the court to usurp the role of domestic courts. And that's one thing, one huge problem with the European Court of Human Rights is even if they want to rule in your favour and even if you are completely in the right, they can turn around and go, yeah, but if we rule in your favour, then we are interfering with a domestic court, so we're not going to do that which kind of renders the ECHR pretty much pointless, but hey-ho. Uh, because he had failed to exhaust domestic uh, remedies, uh, domestic remedies, the application was inadmissible, said the ruling. Mr Lee expressed disappointment that his case had been dismissed on a technicality. I know the feeling. Uh, none of us uh, should be expected to have to figure out the beliefs of a company's owners before going into, into their shop or paying for their services, he says. I completely agree and I understand that. And I feel the same way about social interactions. You know, there might be something that you don't know about a person and there might be something that you say and they take great offence to it and decide to call the police. But and then how are you supposed to know? How are you supposed to know? I agree. I actually agree with you there. Uh, everyone has freedom of expression, but it must equally apply to lesbian, gay, bisexual and trans people, he added. And yes, I completely agree with that. Freedom of expression is something that should be universal. However, one thing that actually is a breach of freedom of expression is something called compelled speech, where you are forcing someone to say or express something that they don't want to say or express. This can be through fear of reprisals or violence, or in this case, a court. Basically, a... Uh, you forcing the bakery to express any particular way was you actually violating their free expression rights. Because, yeah, free, compelled speech is a violation of speech rights. So basically, yep, I get the point you were trying to make. Uh, it's a massive contradiction. But yes, I agree. Like, uh, if lesbians and gays and bisexuals want to make their own cakes that say support gay marriage, yeah, that's fine. Absolutely nothing stopping them from doing that. Go down to Asda just now, get some flour and eggs, and have fun. You can do that. 
trying to force another person to make the cake for you. No, you can't do that. You can't. You can't force other people to say or do things that they don't want to do. I am just frustrated that the court issues did not get fairly analysed and adjudicated upon because of a technicality. Again, I can I can relate. Uh, the baking firm has so far declined to comment on the latest ruling. Very very wise. Whenever you are involved in any kind of uh, any kind of controversy, do not speak to the press. Do not speak to them. A lesser person. The case began in 2014 when Mr. Lee visited a Belfast branch of Asher's Bakery and asked them to bake a cake decorated with the gay marriage slogan. At the, t- at the time, same-sex, mar- same-sex marriage was still illegal in Northern Ireland, but the law has since changed and same-sex weddings have been taking place since February of 2020. <clears throat> I've never understood... <clears throat> pardon me. Never understood the whole marriage thing, like why people wanted it. Why do you want the government involved in your love life? Uh, the cake Mr. Lee requested was to feature an image of Bert and Ernie, two characters from the children's TV programme Sesame Street and the logo of the campaign group Queer Space. Mr. Lee paid £36.50 for a cake and left the shop, but a few days later, uh, bakery staff called him to say that they would not complete the order because of, because of the slogan and would refund his money. Asher's uh, Baking Company is run by the MacArthur's, a Christian family from C- County Antrim. Mr. Lee says the decision to refuse his order had made him feel unworthy and a lesser person. He complained to the Equality Commission for Northern Ireland, who supported him in taking a discrimination case against the bakery. Asher's fought the case, arguing they had not returned Mr. Lee's custom away, away because he was gay, but because he had asked them pr- to produce something that was contrary to their religious beliefs. So it seems that basically they didn't say, which is true, they didn't say, you can't buy a cake here because you're gay. The reason was, you can't buy a cake here because of the message that you want on the cake. I mean, if he walked in and went, I am a gay man, I would like a chocolate muffin, they, they would have just sold him a chocolate muffin. Right, they, they, they didn't care about that part, but he was trying to force the bakery to express an opinion that they did not want to express. Uh, what is the European Court of Human Rights? The European Court of Human Rights is the court of law for the Council of Europe, an organisation founded in the aftermath of World War II. Let it be known, and some people are... This is one thing that's fucking hilarious. Everyone's like, oh yeah, he went to the European Court of Human Rights even though he hates the EU. It's a completely separate entity. The European Court of Human Rights is a completely separate entity to the EU. Yeah, it was formed after World War II. I think the European Court of Human Rights has been around since before the EU. Like, it's its, its own completely separate thing. Uh, to uphold human rights, democracy, unfortunately, and the rule of law in Europe. The Council of Europe has 47 member states, including the UK, and is separated from, separate from the, 20, ah, there you go, the 27 state European Union. The court which sits in Strasbourg in France was set up in 1959 and ensures that member states of the Council of Europe respect the rights and guarantees set out in the European Convention on Human Rights. However, unfortunately, a lot of countries break that all the fucking time. Britain being one of the top main offenders, the only country that does it worse than Britain is uh, Belarus. At least that would have been the case if we were still in the EU. Fortunately, we are not. It has 47 judges, one from each country, but only a small number rule in each case. Individuals can take cases against states, alleging that the state violated their rights under the convention. States can also sue other states, although that is very rare. Closure or more uncertainty? There has been a mixed reaction to the ECHR ruling from Christian organisations and LGTB. That threw me off there saying it like that. Uh, LGBT rights groups who had campaigned on opposite sides of the debate. Simon Calvert from the Christian Institute said that it was the right result and good news for free speech, good news for Christians and good news for the MacArthur's. The Christian Institute has supported the family in defending their baking, baking company against Mr Lee's legal action since 2014. The UK Supreme Court engaged at length with the human rights argument in this case and upheld the MacArthur's right to freedom of expression and religion. It was disappointing to see another attempt to undermine those rights, so it is a relief that the attempt has failed, Mr Calvert said. And yeah, this guy uh, in taking them to court was trying to violate their rights. So the court and throwing it all out, it made the right decision. 
however, the Rainbow Project, a Belfast-based gay rights campaign group, said the UK Supreme Court decision had created legal uncertainty for LGBT people when accessing goods and services, and Thursday's ECHR ruling had not resolved that uncertainty. Now, here's the thing is, right, there are laws, uh, and there are British laws that say that... Uh, companies are not allowed to like not serve you based on things like race and sexuality and blah 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 right now i disagree with that and i think that companies uh, should be able to serve whoever they you know whoever they choose yeah everyone says like uh, oh you don't have a right to your platform i'll get banned from twitter and all that stuff I, f I think you should probably extend that to businesses i'm just saying businesses should be able to fully completely freely choose who they do and do not serve uh, however, there are laws in place where you say you can't you can't have a sign on the door that says no coloreds and all that type of stuff as well. However, we've already established that they didn't refuse to make the cake because he's gay. They refused to make the cake because they, he was asking them to express and produce an image that went against their beliefs. And then he tried to compel their speech by taking legal action against them. Uh, so basically, like LGBT, you can go into whatever shop, bar, whatever the hell you want, and you can buy stuff. You just can't force the owners to do something that violates their rights. I'm sorry, tough titty. Turns out rights are important and rights are nice. See those things that you have been fighting for for the last 50 years? Yeah, we have them too. We have them too. We'd like to keep them. You know, they're, they're shrinking more and more every single day. And uh, you are, you know, the things that you campaigned for, we, we, we think we would like them as well. We quite enjoy them. So if you could, you know, stop trying to take them away from us, that, that'd be great. The Rainbow Project affirms our un fundamental belief in freedom of religion for all people. However, this freedom cannot be extrapolated into privately owned business. Yeah, yeah, yes, it can. Yes, it absolutely can. And used as a justification for discrimination, said its director, John O'Doherty. I would argue that this guy, by uh, taking them to court, was discriminating against them based on religion. There was a religion. I'm not a Christian. I'm not big on the whole religious, religious uh, side of things, right? But the fact that they went, we're not doing this for religious reasons, and you tried to force them, you were discriminating against them. I'm just saying, uh, fellow LGBT campaign group Stonewall, Stonewall, they can fuck right off. Also said Thursday's ECHR decision leaves the door open for legal uncertainty across the UK. Nope, there's no legal uncertainty whatsoever. The law is uh, pretty much crystal clear on that and causes continued unease for our communities. Our thoughts are with Gareth Lee, who deserved more support from the European courts after seven years of working towards equality. Forcing people to do things against their will is not equality. It's not equality. It's authoritarianism. That's You're just lying. But of course, yeah, Stonewall. Uh, said Stonewall's chief executive, Nancy Kelly. Mr. Lee's lawyers, uh, Kieran Moyna, and the, said the ruling was a missed opportunity and that Mr. Lee was considering whether a fresh case could be pursued in the UK. Like he's st they're still going to keep fighting it over this fucking cake. We want these people to do our bidding. Right, this goes on for fucking ages and I'm done with it. Right, I'm, I'm done with this nonsense. Now... One thing that I have noticed among a lot of people on the left, at least the mental side of the left and the LGBT community, now this is basically not everyone in these communities is in this camp. A big portion of them are, but then you get all the little sensible ones, which are the outliers, which are the ones that I like and get along with, and we go for drinks and everything, you know, the normal, normal ones. However, in this camp... You have people who are perpetual victims and they think that because they are a victim, it means they get they get stuff. I get stuff. I'm entitled to this. I, I'm owed this because people were mean to me. So I get things, right? And because these people are so used to getting whatever they want, they also think that they have a right to your labor. They think that they have a right to force you to do things against your will for their benefit. And if you reject that, based on your own human rights, they will say that you are violating their rights by discriminating against them. Of course, if they discriminate against you and compel you to express yourself in a way or force you to do an act that you don't want to do, well, that's just equality. That's just inclusiveness. That's just blah, blah, blah. Authoritarian foofy papi shite. We all know what it is. It's authoritarianism. And it's these people trying to express their power, power over another individual. That is what this is now. Basically, if you go in, could I go into a bakery and go, I want a cake, 
with a big massive fucking swastika and some crime statistics on it. Right? Yeah, I want that. Oh, you need you need to give me that cake. You're not allowed to discriminate against me for my political opinions. Would these people get in and see if you approach these people with that, they would go, well, no, that's different because even though it's not, even though it's not, I would be trying to force a bakery to express a, a message that they do not want to express. And they don't have to because I have no right whatsoever to their labour. I also have no right whatsoever to violate their speech rights or violate their freedom of religion. And that's the thing, like, a lot of people on this side of the politics, like the people in, like the people mentioned in this article, they claim to fight for human rights, except they just don't understand how they work. They have no un un comprehension whatsoever of how human rights actually work. And they are very happy to violate the rights of others for things that they don't have a right to, but they'll pretend they do. Right? So again, the fact that, like, no, we will not bake the fucking cake. There are a million other bakeries that you could have went... By the way, see the European Court of Human Rights? They do war crimes and shit like that. I felt cheeky going to them with my case for a little dog lifting its paw. The European Court of Human Rights deals with fucking war crimes, right? And I'll admit, like, my, my Nazi pug case was probably one of the most frivolous things that ever came across their desk. Well... It was, until, until this bullshit came along. No, you do not have a right to another person's labour. No, you cannot force people to express an opinion they don't believe in. No, you cannot force people to violate their religious practices. Suck it up, find another bakery. There was probably one down the street, you big fucking baby.